on the GMC website before you can even start applying for a PLAB 1 or a PLAB 2. The PLAB exam is something similar to your bachelor degree. So it's a basic level uh, exam. It's not specialized to whatever speciality you want to do. It is more for people that want to enter the country at basic level post-graduation from university rather than people that have already specialized in something for a good few years. Before entering the country, generally, whether you are going for PLAB or you're going for a lot of other uh, routes that we, met, we will mention later, uh, the other speakers very kindly, you will most probably need to sit an English exam. And it's just something to show that you will be able to communicate and understand everyone uh, in here. There are two main English exams. There is the academic IELTS exam, and there is the OAT, the Occupational English Test. They both have very simple, similar composition. So they both have four sections, a listening section where you're gonna hear a conversation and answer questions based on what you heard, a writing section where you're going to write an essay, a reading section where you're going to read a comprehension and answer questions based on what you read, and a speaking section where you're going to converse with a member of staff. They're going to start talking to you, you answer back. They both are held worldwide. Nearly most countries in the world have settings for this exam, um, and they both have a lot of there's a lot of data online for previous exams, which you can go through. And that's one of the best preparations for either of them. Um, the scores, they are, each one of ha them has a separate way of scoring, but they're not far away from each other. The main two differences about them is the IELTS exam is usually cheaper than the OAT exam, but based on what people have found when they came to this country, and I'm going to focus more on the people coming from Egypt that I know, most people said that the OAT exam, the language in it and the expressions in it are closer to us from a medical point of view than the IELTS exam. The IELTS exam is a lot more academic. It's a lot more like research similar to uh, what was mentioned in the first session, how research actually helps you develop a lot more from, for your English language. I personally did the IELTS, that was years ago before OET even existed. But what I understand from a lot of people now is that if you can afford the OET, it's easier to get the passing scores in it uh, from a doctor point of view than it is from the IELTS. One very important notice I have to say about English exams. All these English exams are only valid for two years. And I say only because you need them to be valid when you ask for your full registration for the GMC. So if you're planning to do the PLAB in another year and a half or two years, don't sit the exam now. Make it slightly closer to the time when you're planning to sit the PLAB because you don't want to sit the exam, which will allow you to do the PLAB, but then when you come to registration, the validity of your English exam has gone already. So the PLAB. PLAB has two sections, a PLAB one and a PLAB two. Really what they are looking for, the areas of interest, are areas of clinical practice, things that you would do on a day-to-day -day basis but also areas of professional knowledge and clinical and professional capabilities. Some simple practical skills and procedures. And I mean simple because we're looking at basic. I'm not talking about skills and procedures in operating or something like that. I'm talking about more examination skills, more doing a simple thing like putting a Venflon in, uh, uh, a needle in to give, inject, uh, to give injections intravenously or an intramuscular thing or simple types of examination like an ophthalmoscope examination. So basic bachelor degree 
information. Also, knowledge of different patient presentations and conditions. I'll come back in, in a little bit more details about that in PLAV2. So for PLAV1, if you wanna apply for it, you're looking, as I said, to register to the GMC. The fees are about 240 pounds. And nearly everyone nowadays that I've asked said, I went onto the website for Plavable. I stayed for, I, it's basically a big bank of questions that come before. I've done the exact, I've done the questions multiple times and that was more than enough. There are lots of uh, other websites and place where you can find all the exams, but that is basically what people are doing, going through the questions, previous questions, correct answers, looking through them, learning them, so that when you come and sit the exam. Exam is about 180 questions. They are more multiple choice type questions. So you get about a minute or slightly less for each question, but you should be able to whiz through it if you don't know the answer, just like every any other exam, if you don't know the answer, leave it and jump to the next and then come back to it at the end. You don't need to waste time. One question down is better than leaving um, a lot at the end not answered. The, the PLAV1 is usually set at least four times a year nowadays. And it is usually again set in most countries, as in you will be able to sit it in your own country. The expected outcome, the results usually come out within six weeks. The, there's a way they mark it. So they have the Angus method, which basically puts the people all in a bell curve, uh, where there will always be some people that exceptionally do well and people that unfortunately didn't do very well. And they will usually take about a 60 or 70 percent mark and say that that is the pass mark uh, for the exam. After you've passed your PLAB 1, you will need to consider going for your PLAB 2. You would book again the PLAB 2 uh, through the GMC. And sometimes you can even book a course so that you can do some, um, as we were mentioning in the first session, a bit more trialing and talking to other people from different nationalities. So you train on your English a lot more than actually just training on what you're gonna do for the PLAB 2. You will need to then apply for a visa. And generally when they ask you uh, to go for it, you, they will need to ask a few things. As I've mentioned here, you need to show them you're booking for the PLAB 2 and maybe the course, you might, you need to show them possibly a, plan a plane ticket where you're gonna stay. Sometimes some courses have their own accommodation, um, proof of how you're gonna, what money you're gonna spend there in the UK when you come. And uh, sometimes they would want to look for a reason why you would come back if you were unfortunately unsuccessful. The visa does usually last for about six months. So, it's better to apply for it as soon as you have all the documentation and you know when your exam is going to be. So you don't have to be waiting uh, for the visa tensely when the exam is very shortly happening afterwards. Now, coming to PLAB 2, uh, as I said, we apply for it. It's cost about 879 uh, pounds. Uh, PLAB 2, the format of the exam is three hours of different clinical sessions. Each station, uh, you get to read the instructions for about 90 seconds and then eight minutes of the station itself. Now these stations can vary. They can be a type of clinical examination. You can be taking history. It can be performing a simple clinical task. But again, I reiterate the fact, these ex this PLAB exam, is for basic level, so just after you've graduated, which means that what they're looking for in this country is more you being safe than anything else. So if you do 
if you do everything basically, uh, not to the specialist standard, if you'd like putting it that way, but at least you can find the basic findings that they would expect you to find. And you do it in a very professional way with the patient. So come in, introduce yourself, like Dr. Walid was talking in the first session about communication. Come in, introduce yourself to the patient, develop a, a rapport, clean your hands with alcohol, start having a little, uh, a quick chat before you start doing anything. Okay, all these things give marks to these exams. I sat the exam years ago and it's still the same marking up to now. The same way, these things have marks similar to the marks that you get or very equal to the marks that you get when you do your clinical uh, session itself. Um, the location is usually in Manchester. There's a GMT clinical assessment center in Manchester and it runs actually very frequently nowadays. Um, courses, there is lots of courses. There's a lot of them. The, the first two are very familiar. A lot of people go to them, the Samson and the Swami ones. And they're set in Manchester. I assume it's just because it makes it easy if you come to Manchester, stay in Manchester, do the course, and then end up sitting the exam itself in Manchester. There are virtual courses. People have uh, sessions. You can actually even watch some of the clinical examinations and some of the sessions uh, that are on YouTube. Lots of people have different sessions, uh, what to do. But I think the most important thing about this is not just watching it, is doing it. So training on it. Just like Dr. Walid talked in the morning session, doing something three, four, five, ten times just repeating it with someone else and preferably not always the someone else being speaking your native language. That is very important because then you will have to force yourself to speak in an English language where other people will understand you. Okay. And repeating it makes it a lot easier when you come to the exam, you feel like, oh yeah, this is exactly like what I did when I, when I was sitting the mock between me and my friend or something like that. So I think it's very important that you keep doing that with other people. You can do that nowadays. Uh, technology helps us, Zoom, FaceTime, whatever you want to do. it. So I am sure this is uh, very applicable to do. It doesn't have to be face-to-face. -face. Now, some people have asked about the MLA exam. The MLA exam is basically the UK doing something very similar to the US in making the exam universal between the international medical graduates and the medical schools. This is going to come in in 2024. So in about three years time, it will be exactly the same exam, whether it's for the UK medical students or for the IMG. But actually, when you look at everything that they've talked about in the exam, the MLA exam, you'll find that it's incredibly similar from a requirement, from the what they're targeting, from uh, what, they, what they're looking for from a content point of view, uh, similar to the PLAV exam. Uh, questioning about whether this will apply to all other routes, uh, when I asked the team at the GMC, they said that it won't apply to the other routes. So a lot of the other routes will still go ahead without having to do the MLA exam. Uh, and I, I mean routes other than the PLAB. Uh, the, there was a question in the first session that asked, should I actually wait for the MLA exam uh, and not sit the PLAB now? The answer is, I wouldn't wait for it. I would go by whatever you would normally do for your career, because similar to what was mentioned in the morning session about CVs, gaps in your CV, unexplainable gaps in the CV are not always advisable. So 
if you've already planned that I've graduated, I want to sit the plan, or I want to sit an exam to come to the UK, then go ahead, do it now. Don't wait for something else. But if you already plan that you want to stay uh, in your own country, do another degree or do something else or more experience and want to come in a different route or want to do the lab later, then fine. When it ever, whenever the MLA comes, then it comes. So I would go by your personal situation rather than generally uh, choosing whether it's an MLA or a lab. Okay, thank you very much. Perfect. So, thanks a lot, Dr. Amr. Um, this has been a very, very nice uh, talk, and I'm sure lots of us have uh, learned a lot. I personally learned a few things that I didn't know. Next speaker uh, is uh, Mr. Arthur Tripoli. Mr. Arthur Tripoli is going to talk to us about Masters in Medicine. Originally, this talk was going to be delivered by uh, Dr. Sam Abdurrahim, but unfortunately he's not going to join us today uh, for personal reasons. Mr. Atfur Poli is a consultant EMT in Manchester University Foundation Trust, and he is also the founder and the chairman of the BIMA organization, the British uh, Egyptian Medical Association. 